Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show, where we are incredibly focused, right, on our mission to empower women to live a financially free and balanced life. And everything we do throughout everything we're involved in right now comes from that mission. So we are excited to have you back on, right, Andressa, for our mini-sode? Yes. Where we talk, what, 10 minutes or less or around 10 minutes <laughs> about something? Very focused. Very focused. Very focused. Yeah. You, ladies don't, women don't have time to waste and we do not want to waste your time. So if you are joining us, we appreciate you and we want to get to it as quickly as we can so you can get something from this and uh, keep moving your life along in the way that works for you on your own terms. So Andressa, what are we talking about today? A very exciting subject. Oh, very exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> How to handle lawsuits. Oh, isn't that good? Right? I see all of you jumping up and down. So I cannot wait to hear more about it. All right. So let's talk about lawsuit, right? And I, I'm sure you didn't wake up today thinking, oh, I can't wait to listen to this episode about lawsuits. Uh, one thing I know for sure that if you are growing your business and um, your portfolio, pivoting, building teams, dealing with different contractors. And I'm not mentioning just general contractors. I mean, other companies that offer different services to you, to your business, you will face a lawsuit at some point. That's just part of doing business. So I want to break down a couple of ways that you can look into it. And uh, the cost of doing business, how does that affect you um, in, in a positive and negative way? And here, what, here's what I mean by that. Um, I didn't grow up, I didn't see my parents having conversations, strategic conversations with attorneys. Attorneys to me were like, oh, you have a problem or you need to defend yourself or, or you know, it, it, it was never positive. And uh, throughout my career, I have dealt with completely different types of, of real estate attorneys. Y you name it, um, collections, uh, lawsuits with general contractors, asset protection um, with our brand. There's so many different conversations, uh, commercial leases, like it's, it's nuts. But here's, let's get into the nitty gritty over here. The first thing that I will recommend, you're going to look into asset protection strategies as you grow your business. Um, if you have properties already or if you're looking to acquire properties and have it either in your name or under a, a company, an LLC or other model, highly recommend to have a conversation with an attorney about what you're looking to do. Asset protection to me is very, very important. Otherwise, you're just going to keep putting up fires. Um, and I read their pay for an attorney to review a contract, then <laughs> miss something very important that I will have to pay much, much more after that. The second thing is that I don't know about you, Liz, but a lot of people feel that, oh, if there are in a lawsuit, um, they're, you know, against somebody or somebody is against them, um, suing them. They feel that they, they are, they're the same, meaning they feel bad. So I'm going to tell you right now that you are not your lawsuit, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's Things big. Things can happen. I can share with you, Liz and I were in a project and uh, we got sued by the homeowner who bought the property. And we're like, what's going on over here? Yeah. And here there was a stucco problem. And then you're going to start investigating. Wait a minute. But I do have a contractor, a licensed contractor with insurance. But the contractor hired somebody not skilled 
to do the job. Yeah. And it was done improperly. At the end of the day, the homeowner can can sue the contractor. Yes, if they have assets, great. But when when the homeowner looked at the contractor and us, they're like, well, I'll sue everybody, right? And then until you get things resolved and everybody gets into the same page, you already spend a lot of a lot of money. Uh, figuring things things out. So the first thing that I mentioned to you is asset protection, number one. And when you're getting into a relationship with other contractors, look how the clauses on the contract is to handle lawsuits. Are you guys lo looking to do arbitration first or first going straight up to, um, to court? All of those scenarios in your partnerships as well. How would you separate? How would you handle that case is very important. So the second thing is like, try to avoid having an attorney in, involved in certain areas. And let me pause here so you can understand because I've been praising attorneys here. Yeah, and now what, saying, what advice are you get? You're like, <laughs> right? Here's the thing. I think that we do have the communication skills and the negotiation skills to come into an agreement prior of involving an attorney, right? If I am involving an attorney, it means that I already had several conversations, several proposals, tried to create a win-win and that didn't work. That is my, my, my goal to over here because at the end of the day, it's like it's cheaper and you can have less time consumption of time if you come into an agreement and you, you, you both parties go go their their own own way um involving an attorney is when all of those parts were already you already try all of those that doesn't mean though that i wouldn't consult with an attorney about the things that i am looking to propose or creative ways that I am proposing to resolve the, the situation. But if I am getting an attorney, then it's another hat that I'm gonna wear. That is like sitting on fire, basically, right? You kind of step back and that might be unconscious, uh, uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, it's very strategic. There's no like, okay, well, let's accommodate here and, and find a solution. And there is no other way. That turns are going to be talking to each other. And you are at the end of the day, I would say that you are in control. You got to manage that. It's like projects, right? You got to manage what's, what's, what's going on here. Otherwise, it can take years. So it's always like a balance list in terms of, well, okay, how much time I'm spending over here, how much uh, stress is this adding to, to, to my life or and the fairness of it? Do I feel that I got justice over here or I, I it is what it is? You know, it's at the point they're like, okay, let's take the loss over here and, and move along because this is consuming yeah. a lot of my time and the energy into it. And you, you, you gain a lot of skill set by being in different lawsuits and seeing what's going on, right? What, 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 who is, how can I prevent this from happening in the future? How can I avoid this situation? What I've learned from it? Because if you don't learn about your lawsuits, oh, it's going to happen again. Sorry to say. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's really, I, I know this is a big statement to say, but you could, you should celebrate when you get sued. You should celebrate. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And why I say celebrate it from a from the perspective of you're playing a you're playing a big enough game, right? That you're putting yourself in the arena. Not that I want anyone to get sued, but honestly, if you're going to be in this business long enough, you are pro something's going to happen legally with some one of your projects. Um, and and so it's really important to say okay all right, let me go through this. Let me go through this with grace. Let me go through this to make me um, a better investor. Let me go through this so I can, I can grow my skills as a, as a business owner. Um, you know, whether I give things too easily or I'm too tough, you have such an opportunity to learn and grow um, and, and, and think about costs and benefits, right? This is going to cost me X. What's the benefit? 
do I settle now? Do I really go to the end? Um, you have to answer, like Andres was just saying, you'll have to ask yourself all those things. And you, if you allow it to help you become a better businesswoman and investor, then you should celebrate that it happened. You have to do in business, right? It's the cost of, of, of on the, on the, the, the ladder of our evolving as, as people, um, bigger games you play, the bigger issues are going to happen. Yeah. That's, that's the nature of it. I also think that a lawsuit will test your partnerships. I was just going to say that. You took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I wrote right? it down. I wrote part partnership, but go on. Why is that, Andressa? Why, why does it test your partnerships? Think about it. It, it you know, it's not fun uh, to have to go through a lawsuit and those conversations, you know, then when the attorney answers the phone, the time starts ticking. Right. And getting those invoices at the end of the month yeah. is really not cool. <laughs> right. Um, so it's a stressful situation. And it, when you have partners, you learn a lot about them. You learn about how they handle it, how they also honor the other person, you know, how they honor, how they handle the other attorney. You learn a lot about the person itself. What is our bottom line? I think that when we got sued um, or when we sued people, you and I with Matt, we were very aligned on how we wanted to resolve the situation, what was fair and um, our bottom line. And, and we just were very, very aligned into it and got it resolved and, and, and move on. So looking back, I'm looking back right now and just like observing what I've learned. I've learned about like, we are super aligned on our core values very, very much. We weren't this like totally opposite uh, uh, on the spectrum of how we wanted to handle the, the, the situation. And I think that the most important thing is like, honoring the other person and seeing the other person in it, not making the other person the wrong person and you the right one, but honoring the, the, the human being that, that are interacting here. That's what I've learned so far. How about you? What have you learned, Liz? <laughs> I've learned I have some room to go on my negotiation. Uh, <laughs> Liz, yeah, it's your fun, Liz. Liz is just like, okay, great. We're like, <laughs> Matt and I were like, no, it's not correct. <laughs> no, we're going to play here because that's when it goes, right? But of course, we need Liz to balance our our approach. Uh, and I think that it's a combination. Right? I think that the thing that I've learned too, just in general of, of sticky situations like that um, is to really separate yourself from the business. Mm. And I think so many times for me, uh, maybe this is just me, but I like I am, you become the business, right? You become the brand, you know, especially with what we're up to with invest her, right? Like it and, it, and it is, there's a separation, right? There's a person, there's like who we are as people. And then there's, there's, there's entities, if you will. Yeah. And yeah. when you take things very personally and you put your heart into things, um, it sometimes gives things get a little, those lines get a little crossed and really good business owners and entrepreneurs, um, there's separation, I mean, mental separation, right? And, uh, you know, they're suing the company, not suing me. Well, they are technically suing me, but, but, but meaning like my, my essence, right. My, my, mm -hmm. did, and then you go back, okay, what happened, you know, um, and, and, you know, those sort of things. And I think it, you grow your confidence from, from the, the, the toughest, the toughest things that have happened to me, I feel mm -hmm. like in business have helped me grow the most hands down, you know, and, and it's also like, there's not many other bad things that can happen, right? You can kind of come back from anything. So in some ways, the loss of money or the project going south, getting sued, really are all things you kind of want to get out of the way as yeah. fast as you can. So it could keep building your kind of confidence level, I think, rather than like, well, I'm so glad none of that's ever happened. Well, mm. that's awesome. But if you play a bigger game, something, something along the lines of loss of money or a project going south or not everything's going to, you're not going to hit a home run every time is going to happen. It's just the nature of numbers. So um, celebrate that. Celebrate it for what is going to help you become and who you're going to become as a result, as a, as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, and, and an investor. Yes. So that's the positive aspect, you know? 
I agree. And look at it as the cost of doing business. It's the cost of doing business. Then there's no like emotion right there, right? Yeah. You're like mooning that, well, how much you paid or things like that. Just the cost of doing business. Just move along, learn the lesson and move forward, ladies. And last thing is really quickly, if you allow your yes. emotions to get involved, the partners mm -hmm. you need are partners who don't allow their emotions to get involved and look at things very black and white. So that's why I love Andressa so much because she has an amazing ability to not, not just, it's, we just had a conversation before recording this, right? Black yes. and white, you know, and I think there's value wherever you are on the spectrum, make sure you partner with people have a different way of looking at it, especially when you're going through a lawsuit. It's really going to be yes. very helpful. And if you are black and white, partner with people that see grace, like Liz. It's very important. It is very important because relationships are not always black and white or zero or one, right? There's a lot of things in between, but it's not how my, my brain naturally works. So that's why I relied on, on her perspective. And that's why partnerships always work. That being said, Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope it was helpful. Let us know how it goes. If you have not, I'm going to give you a, a quick uh, thing over here to do. If you don't have anything else, no, no, just kidding. Here's what I would like you to do. Go to iTunes and um, review our podcast. We really appreciate that. The goal here is for us to get to as many women as possible. And there's a lot of women out there that don't know that we exist yet. So if you have somebody that you like, trust, and respect that can also benefit from this episode, share with them and let us know what you would like to learn more about. We are here to support you. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.